Hey guys, and welcome back to JAT Workshop and Design. Um, got a little bit something different uh, than our normal 3D printing stuff today. Um, do you got an old Ender 3 laying around still that is just collecting dust or you're not using anymore with all the release of all these new speedy machines? Or are you just sick of building the same old articulated toys and flexi dragons and funny little cones. Well, if you want to do something completely different with your Ender, they have a laser module that you can attach to that machine. And I have just I have done just that over the course of this video and done some testing and test models. You can make something as cool as this with it. What this is, is a backlit mirror um, that I designed and made uh, with that laser module from Creality on my old Ender 3 V2. Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to install that laser module. A um, couple little ways to go through the test um, scan with it, I guess you would call it, or test cut. Um, and then show you the process on this and how you can make one yourself with just your old Ender that you have laying around. So stay tuned and thanks for joining us today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what I have for you today is a good old classic. I got the Ender 3 V2. Uh, this is a very stock machine here. Uh, it does still have the Bowden tube set up and it had the glass bed. I did switch it over to this metal bed. Um, single Z, nothing special about this machine. Uh, I sold my highly upgraded one and then I ended up having a buddy a couple weeks later uh, decide to give me his. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do one of two things. Either destroy the thing because I hate these V2 models so much or convert it over to a laser cutter, which is what I ultimately decided to end up to do. So in this box here that I have sitting behind the machine, I have the Creality 10 watt laser module. And we're going to convert this here, Ender 3 V2, to a 10 watt laser cutter. All right, so I got the printer moved out of the way here, and we'll get to opening up the box and seeing what is all included with this thing. So get in here, um, it's all in a pretty nice foam packaging, nothing's really going to move around much here. Um, right on top we do have the quick start guide, put that off to the side. Um, do have this here, uh, which this is the brain box to the entire setup. Um, got some USB to USB-C, uh, looks like the brain box actually does have a USB-C connection on it. Uh, so they have upgraded that from the previous years. Um, and another bag here, looks like you got the bracket. Um, pretty simple bracket to mount that onto the tool head of the printer. Um, down to the module. Over here we got the, uh, looks like the power brick and power cable to the brick. Um, so this does run independently of the 3D printer and firmware. So basically when you hook this up, you do not use anything. You don't use the touch screen of the machine or anything like that. You can use the machine for the Z offset. Uh, if you want to use that to control your Z and your focus and stuff like that. Uh, but you have to do that manually. It does not tie into the system. The brain box here um, actually ties in directly to the uh, Y and X axis of the machine and takes over complete control of the machine. So up next in here, uh, they also include the glasses, um, laser cutting. Uh, laser resistant glasses are incredibly important. Uh, these are a green tent ones. Um, they're very sub par quality from what I'm feeling already. Uh, they do fit over glasses. Um, they do work lightly. Uh, I would recommend on these to 
go out and buy some nice quality ones. Uh, just make sure you protect your eyes. Uh, it is very important. These will work if you're just doing it now and then, but if you're gonna do a lot of work, I would highly recommend getting some nice quality ones that will fit you well. Um, next up in here, looks like we got uh, a little bit of hardware bag. Um, in this hardware bag, uh, there's a handful of things. Looks like three zip ties are included here, an Allen wrench. Uh, we do have a USB stick with a micro SD adapter. Interesting. Uh, so you can, if you don't have a micro USB adapter for your computer, that is exactly what this is. So that's actually kind of cool that they included that in there. Um, it's like the micro SD comes out of there pretty hard, but. Um, pretty neat little addition for Creality to include. Because uh, this is micro SD, it does not have a normal USB here. Uh, next thing it includes is the focus um, staircase, basically. Um, so depending on what you're cutting or engraving, it kind of gives you a baseline of where to focus. Uh, there is another ramp you can basically do a test once a machine is all set up and run to get you a little bit better one um, but this works for the time being and next here is the actual module itself so it is in an anti-static bag it wants you to read the security statement so this here is the 10 watt module itself uh, it's quite a bit smaller than i originally thought off of the pictures and stuff like that um, though it is quite a bit bulkier than the 5 watt or the 1.6 watt versions. Uh, it's a pretty simple square, um, nothing major. It is quite a bit heavier than the print head, uh, so your speeds aren't going to be capable as a fast as the you know, print head on your printer. Um, but it should do plenty for the laser etching. Uh, the other thing that I do plan on doing is I do not ever plan on using this V2 as a printer again. So I will be removing the actual print head itself and I will be removing the Bowden uh, setup on the machine uh, to save a little bit of weight and complexity and not have to deal with that around there. I may also be printing a fixed bracket for the machine instead of this giant hanging bracket as this is designed to be able to hang below uh, the print head like so so it actually hang down pretty low um, you know increasing a little bit of that weight and acceleration limitations that that wouldn't that that would ensue um, so by being able to move that this up um, closer to where it would originally be with say like the print head um, we can gain a little bit of that acceleration limits and stuff like that back. I don't really know if that's going to be an issue or anything like that, but it's something I want to do just because I want more Z height if I need it, if I'm engraving something tall or something like that. Uh, the last piece that it has in here um, is a piece that I will not be using. This is your laser shield. Um, it is magnetized onto the bottom of the laser module here. So it just basically snaps right on. Uh, I did order the air assist module, uh, which I am still waiting to get. I should have it here hopefully later today actually. So when we actually go to set this up and test it, I'll be able to show you the installation of that. Uh, the air assist, basically it replaces this piece and on this, we got a black little screw knob. The screw knob will um, come off of this, and then the air assist attachment screws onto here. And then the this will have a notch so you can hook up the air. So when it's on here, you have a notch where you can hook up the air off to the side. So anyway, that's everything that's included in the box here. Uh, we'll get to doing a installation, and then shortly after that, we'll get to some testing.
All right, I'm not going to bore you about the whole uh, installation and stuff. I'm just going to do a quick time lapse on this. In the time lapse, I'm going to go ahead and remove the Bowden setup. I'm going to remove the print head, uh, like I say, just because I want to. Um, leave everything else pretty much as it is. I'll just have the wires off to the side and stuff like that. But as far as that goes, we'll get to the time lapse. All right, now I got that, that hot end and Bowden set up all off to the side here. Uh, we do have it fully exposed here. Now, keep in mind, you do not have to remove your hot end. Normally, you will clip this on and then unclip it and you're back to the 3D printer. Um, so this mounts in a pretty interesting way. Uh, back on the... Z wheels, it's actually completely back behind the hot end and everything. Um, so again, you don't really have to do any modifications to the actual machine itself to do this. Um, I'll show a picture of this here, but it just snaps between the little spacer back here and it comes down and it has a tension screw right here. Um, and then when you tighten it up, that's basically all it needs to do. Um, now, this is kind of a, I don't know, kind of a love it or hate it type setup. Uh, it's definitely not perfect, but for a temporary solution and quick jobs, I see absolutely no issue with it. Um, it's kind of one of the reasons that I want to make a different bracket for myself uh, because this is, for me, it is a permanent install and it's not something I'm gonna go back and forth with. Now once this, it's just a single screw here, and it basically puts torque down onto one and then pulls up on the other to keep it in place. Um, it's, it's honestly probably sturdier than the setup is. Uh, there, there's no extra wobble induced or anything like that, even pulling down on the bottom of this. So overall, I, I'm pretty impressed about the quality and stability as far as how they want you to do it and the intended purpose of it being you know what it is of the making it capable of going back and forth um, and that's the huge thing with this so this will just slide up um, it's it's adjustable uh, for your focus and depending on what you're cutting and stuff like that and the rest of it you adjust off of your z height now, the other thing is too, is like I say, I, I don't want to run this machine as a 3D printer, um, and I don't even really want to hook power up to this to keep the Z steady. This is heavy enough with everything else set up there, especially if you have a direct drive set up, that there is reports of the Z working itself down as your laser engraving back and forth. So I, that's why I wanted to take all this extra weight and everything off of the Z uh, to compensate for the weight of this. Um, so I don't really have, so hopefully I really won't have that issue. Now, did I take off as much weight as I added here? No, absolutely not. Um, but as far as my NG uh, direct drive extruder was, it's probably a similar weight to that. So hopefully I don't have any issues. If you do have issues, all you have to do, plug in the printer, turn it on so the Z stepper motor is active, and that'll hold it steady. Um, there is other ways you could activate the motor if you wanted to. I'm sure there's a quick little plug-in you can do to just basically have the motor hold itself. Um, but yeah, that is basically the assembly of the laser module onto the Ender 3 machines. Uh, this installation is pretty much the same between whether you have the V2, uh, the V1, the Neo, the Neo Max, et cetera, et cetera, they all just clamp right onto these V wheels. Now it will differ if you have linear rails 
uh, it will not work with this bracket anyway with the linear rail setup. So you will have to figure out your own bracketry uh, if you have a modded machine. Now also keep in mind that the way this bracket is set up, it will not work on any of the V3 machines. Possibly on the SE, um, but I know the KE has linear rails and my V3 no suffix has rods. So it would definitely not work on that without a custom bracketry setup. So that being said, the other part of the install is all going to be in the wiring. Uh, it does come zip tied together. So we're gonna go ahead and undo that. Um, so what we got here is a couple connectors. Um, and that is labeled Y and Y. This one here is labeled X, which X is going to be your laser engraver. And this one should be Z. No, Z, Z is your laser engraver. Sorry, I had that backwards. Um, so anyway, I will get this thrown on and be back with you shortly. All right, so um, this is probably gonna be the hardest part of your wiring install is the end stops here. Uh, so in this wiring loom for the Falcon box, uh, they do include an extension. Uh, so you won't have to continuously take the song off, this thing off every time you switch back and forth. It will just unplug from this point a little bit further out from now on to switch back to your regular 3D printer. So. That is a, again, nice little thought out feature that they did um, in making this be able to go back and forth. So again, back to the time lapse and uh, we'll get this X done. And there, as simple as that, uh, we now have a Ender 3 V2 10 watt laser cutter machine. Um, wiring is incredibly simple. Again, on, on, the, on the X here, they included these little extensions. Don't really know why in this case. Um, both plugs are the same here, and they're both easily accessible. Um, but they're there in case you want to use them and you know, extend your wires down a little bit for a little bit easier to access for switching back and forth. Um, again, Y was probably the most difficult um, to wire in. It's one screw, nothing really major. And that is basically the entire conversion um, and the ability to go back and forth. So when you want to undo this, just unplug these, plug your factory plugs back in. Um, and the Y, unplug those, plug your factory ones back in, and your print head would already be set up and ready to run. So, and the Z would already be set up also. Um, the other thing on the Falcon, the Falcon box is controlled with one button, so you can only load one file at a time if you want to use it in offline mode. So you would basically start it up, you would push the button once, and it will start tracing the outline of what you want to cut, and then you push the button one more time once you're set up and going, and then it will start the etch or the cut, whatever you have set in there. The other thing is, if you do plan on cutting with this machine or etching, etc., do not do this inside your house. It is a smoky mess and it is highly toxic. So do this outside, do this in your garage, workspace, outside. And if you're enclosed, make sure you have an enclosure with a ventilation setup. Um, I will not be using this in my house. Uh, when we go to do the test stuff, I will have it out in my garage and I will be using this machine out there. The other big thing, um, this will destroy your hotbed if you use it just like this. So please do not just use it on your hotbed. Um, this is a single-sided PEI sheet, 
spring steel. Um, I will flip that over um, in case for some reason I ever do decide to use this as a 3D printer again. I don't want to destroy the PEI coating. Uh, the other thing that they did not include is a honeycomb setup, which I just ordered this also um, from Amazon. Uh, I will have the links below uh, to the 10 watt module, to the print bed, and the air uh, module also um, that you'll be seeing later today. And what the laser module does is it allows your cuts to be cleaner and it'll actually allow you to cut a little bit deeper because it gets rid of the smoke and lets the laser uh, do its work and not have to fight the smoke. So this is a, a Dofki uh, honeycomb bed. Dofki, Dofki, not really sure how you want to pronounce it, but there it is right there. Uh, this is a pretty nice setup. It comes well packaged. And this is designed exactly actually for the under three. So it does fit the print bed size almost exactly. The other cool thing, this does include its own little aluminum sheet. Um, that in case you don't have a PI sheet that you can reverse, etc. Good. Peel this film off. And that is what you would have underneath the print bed there, or underneath the honeycomb. And what this honeycomb does is it allows for a cleaner cut, because uh, if you're on a smooth surface and you try doing cutting, your laser can actually reflect back into your wood, and it'll cause smoking, smoking to get trapped between the wood. It'll cause excessive heat, so it'll char it a little bit more, where this will allow that laser to pass all the way through and get past the wood, past whatever material you're cutting, and be a cleaner cut on the bottom side as well as the top side. The other cool feature about this one that a lot of them don't have, this does have your full millimeter markings on three sides here. So you'll know exactly where you're at. So um, recommend using light burn. Uh, that is the one that I will be using on this. That it is a paid uh, program. It is $60, but it is a lifetime license. You do not get upgrades with that license, except for the first year. You'll get the license upgraded up to a year from purchase. Um, this module does come with a 30-day trial. And anyway, yeah, that's pretty much the basics of all of that. I'm going to go ahead and affix this to the print bed a little bit better and we'll get it moved out to the garage and we'll start doing some test cutting. Thank you. All right, and here's the machine all set up with the air assist on and whatnot. It is currently doing its, its framing on the initial setup and I set it up and then I installed these pens to hold the piece where it's at. So this is an acrylic mirror. Uh, it is adhesive back, so I'm not really sure how it's going to work. This is a material test, uh, so it will do 100 little squares at different speeds and settings. So on this air assist, it goes over to this little box over there. And then it just comes to the power cord here. And it's got low, off, off, low, and then high. As you can hear, it is rather quiet uh, you can barely hear the motor and you can hear a little bit of air coming out there there is quite a bit of flow um, for the test I will go ahead and have it on high and then on the module here you flip it on it does a couple beeps and a startup you push the button once and that's when it starts this framing if I push it one more time it will start I don't currently have my glasses, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and we will come back to a time lapse.
All right, and that is the end of the first little test here. So I'll go ahead and flip the laser off. And go ahead and flip the air off. Pull this back out. So generally this would have a bunch of etching around the outside. Um, obviously I don't have many settings or anything fully set yet. Um, we'll go ahead and get this out of here. So you can see here that we did etch through. Um, but yeah, take this back inside, analyze it a little bit better, and come back out for a second test that hopefully gives us a little bit better results. All right, as we're going through the time lapse here, I'm uh, going to go ahead and go through some of the settings that you got to do to set this thing up in light burn. Now, the important thing here is Lightburn is not a free program. It does cost about $60 um, to purchase it. Uh, you can also use a free program. Uh, has a lot less features, etc. in it, though. Um, so I do recommend Lightburn. It has been very handy. Uh, it's a little cumbersome to learn right away, um, but once you get the hang of it, it didn't take me too long to catch on. Uh, there is a lot of tutorials on YouTube for general use on it. But when you do go to set up this Creality Laser, um, there is no presets in it like you do with slice, like there is with slicers um, for 3D printing. So um, the important thing that you want to do on your initial startup, it will ask you to make a basically a profile for your laser on the uh, on the SD card that comes with your cutter there will be a file on it um, that will have all of the presets for your machine now that is something that I failed to do and I was not able to find another one because I went ahead and deleted it and made my own test file and stuff first uh, which did not work out well um, so I ended up having to find the file for the Falcon 10 watt machine and Essentially everything is the same between the Falcon 10 watt because it is the same laser. I just had to go through and adjust the uh, bed area. So once you get that all set up, you will have to also go in through the device settings. Or, let me double check here. you'll want to go in through the normal settings and change over the units and grids. Um, you'll want to change the from where it says millimeters per second to millimeters per minute. As most things with the diode lasers are set up and described in millimeters per minute. Um, so that way it's a little bit larger number because if we're dealing millimeters per second, it would be extremely small numbers. And you do want a little bit of the larger numbers so you can get a little bit more adjustability in there. Now doing this mirror, uh, what I ended up selling it, settling up on is 3000 uh, millimeters per minute and 75% power. Now this will differ uh, depending on color of the background of the mirror it will depend on the thickness of the mirror it will depend on lots of things so most of your materials that you will end up working with in this process it's not quite it's very similar to 3d printing where a lot of different materials require a little bit different tolerances on your setting slicer settings but as far as this goes it is much more important to make sure you adjust um, per material that you're using. Now the test file takes about 20 minutes to run so not a huge deal and then from there um, like this mirror took a right around 25 minutes um, from start to completion. So it's very quick um, very easy to work with once it's set up again proper ventilation eye protection etc is going to be very important when using these as it can be toxic um, the other thing the material settings and the test uh, object 
you can set it up to either fill or line. You will want to do the line if you're trying to do cuts into objects. So you can test your parameters for what is going to cut an object. And then you use your fill uh, settings for testing out uh, your best etching. Um, so there's a lot to it. And I'm not going to get into the super deep dive today. But that is going to be your basics if you're interested in one of these. And want to kind of know the background of what is going to be uh, required in this process um, once you get one. Now there's a ton of videos out there on as far as deep dives into what settings are but there is not much specific as far as deep dives go into this 10 watt module. So if you guys are interested in seeing more about this laser, uh, my future laser projects, or just wanting more of a deep dive into the settings and testing process of materials, etc. Um, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, if we get enough uh, want and need for it, I will surely uh, do a video once I'm a little bit more versed in the program and give you guys a lot more to go off of specifically with this 10 watt module. So um, that pretty much wraps up the testing and this time lapse that we got going on. Uh, we'll go up to the finish here. All right, guys, we're back in from the garage here, and I got my first test print completely all done. Um, it turned out real well. Um, got my settings dialed in pretty good, and it etched that glass quite well. Um, it's lightly frosted there. Um, and if you look from the back side, you can kind of see there, it is transparent still, but it is not perfectly clear. Um, to get perfectly clear, you have to do a little bit different of a mirror. Uh, generally, they will have just more of a painted uh, back on these. Um, so some different coatings on the back of the mirror will cause a little bit different, whether it's completely clear when you're done or not. A lot of mirrors will have a, a black, smooth coating on the back. And that's kind of what you'll want to do with this white coating. It's almost like a powder type base. And that, what is that, what's that's doing is actually kind of etching itself into that glass on the back a little bit, causing the frosting, um, in my testing and on my test models, it is doing, <clears throat> and in my test models that I have painted on the back side, and when you turn it around, it shows that color extremely well. So uh, it's a couple different things that we can do with this um, when we're done and lots of different options um, as far as finished products go. As you can see it backlights very well. Um, what I'm gonna do here with this one is I'm going to design a frame for it that will take a 3D printed diffuser and a framing so that I can run a RGB uh, light in it and that we can that way we can hang it up here in the background somewhere or on my little spiral here or my little circle that I have not quite finished yet. One of those two so it'd be a cool little background uh, deal. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing here is trying to get you know at least one main thing uh, from each one of my videos or each one of my main videos and kind of keep it in the background here as I build this channel. So if you guys have any other questions with this or comments, um, feel free to leave them below, give me a like and a subscribe. And of course I will have all of the links and stuff uh, for the mirrors that I used, um, for the Creality module, for that honeycomb bed, etc., and leave that all down in the description below. They will be affiliate links with Amazon, so it will help support my channel and help me grow and keep cool new products coming so I can keep showing you guys awesome new things and help you in your journeys also. Thanks for watching. Um, have a great day.